Hello everybody. Today I'm going to talk about Nebosh safety cause um element six in IGC two, right? So I'm going to talk about fire safety. When we're talking about fire safety, fire safety simply means that is the fire ign ignition and the classification and the spreading. So in this my topic, I will first talk about the principle of fire. Before a fire can start or commence, the following three elements must be present in sufficient quality, right? We are talking about the heat. Fire is the combination of fuel, oxygen, and heat. So whenever there is a three combination, then fire can ignite, right? So we're talking about fuel. Fuel is which include the uh, combustible material. What are combustible materials like paper, wood, dust, and uh, gas? So these are combustic uh, material. Then we're talking about oxygen. Oxygen is a minimal quantity must be present to support a fire. So when oxygen is present, then fire can also occur, right? Then we're talking about heat. There are three elements talking about heat also. I've talked about fuel, oxygen, and now I'm talking about heat. Heat is a form of energy and the source of ignition. Ignite means to ignite, to start, to spark. Short as a flame or a spark or the heat results from this process, right? So, for example, when we're talking about fuel, without fuel, uh, these two cannot operate, cannot ignite fire, oxygen and heat. So three of them must be present before a fire can be ignited, like the fuel, oxygen and heat. So without uh, fuel, oxygen and heat cannot work. So or without uh, oxygen, fuel and heat cannot ignite fire. So I'm going to talk about the classification of fire, right? So when we're talking about the classification of fire, is there are different types of classifications of fire. Fire are usually classified by fuel type. System of classification may be very internationally, but in the UK, for example, the following system are used. So there are different types of fire, and uh, according to the UK or the British system, a fire is it's classified into five types which is class A, B, C, and D, and F, which I'm going to explain, right? So we're talking about class A fire. Class A fire is like um, solid, right? Solid uh, combustible material, short as paper or wood. Then class B fire is a flammable liquid like a petrol, oil, grease, fat, or paint. So these are class C fire, class B fire. Then class C fire are like uh, gas, gas like propane and natural gas. So these also are called class C fire. Then class D fire are mental like um, aluminium, sodium, potassium, magnesium, barium. So all these uh, carbon, all these are class D fire. Then you're talking about class F. Class F fire like cooking fats, short as chips or pan fire, right? Then I'm going to talk about the next topic. We talk about principle of heat transmissions and fire spreading, right? So when we're talking about uh, fire spreading, there are different types of way by which fire can be spread. So as I liked before, um, uh, fire is the combination of heat, oxygen, and, uh, and heat, fuel, and oxygen. I'm going to explain, cite an example, like in Australia, or in Canada, whenever where there is a high forest, right? So because of this forest, they have a lot of leaves, dry leaves that are there. So because of these dry leaves that are there, then oxygen is already present in this place, in this location. So then they just need heat. So when the place is very hot during a, 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 a summer, when the place is very hot, so automatically it will ignite fire. So that is the combination of heat, fuel, and oxygen, right? So I come back to the, the, the principle of heat transmission and how fire can spread. We have different type, how, this type of way how fire can be spread. We have direct burning. We have conventions. 
then we have conduction, then we have radiation. So these are means by which fire can spread from one place to another. So let me highlight uh, or explain direct what is direct burning direct burning is where there is a direct contact from one sources to another right so like direct burning is when a fuel and oxygen uh and heat they come together in one particular place then there is ignition of fire then convention fire convention is where the the hot here arise in a coal or or fall or can cause this an ear to flow through a spread a spread a fire rapidly so convention simply means that from one items from one materials to another like the place is very hot fire is is ignited in one place so because of there is a lot of wind so because of this wind the, the, the fire can or the heat temperature can go through the ear and also affect the other area which can ignite fire right then also we're talking about conduction what is conduction conduction is where the heat is transfer it transfer through a solid material so conduction is also called like conductor so when we're talking about electrical spark electrical spark are um con electrical uh, fire is the uh conduction when a, a, a an electron goes through when an electron goes through a conductor, then it can ignite in current. So this simply means that when, a, a, um, uh, when there is a mental material, because of the heat in one place, this mental uh, material also can produce fire or can produce current at the other end, right? So this also is called convention. Then we're talking about radiation. Gradation also is where an heat travel through the air from the sources and also may ignite any fabric or material or, or, or material. So radiation also can get radiation from the sun, right? It can lead to burning. Then radiation also from gamma, beta, right? Some heavy machines, they, because of the overheat temperature in them, the high voltage, it can produce radiation. They're also talking about these X-ray systems also. X-ray systems also can produce radiation, right? So, I, I'm going further to talk about the common cause and consequence of fire, right? In, in every workplace. So, what are the causes of, of fire? One, I'm going to highlight about uh, eight points, right? The causes of fire. One, we're talking about electrical equipment, right? Electrical equipment, equipment fatal wire, misuse, and inappropriate uh, equipment. So fire, uh, uh, electrical equipment can cause fire because of misuse. People can misuse these electrical materials, then uh, inappropriate equipment that the equipment maybe is not good. Then also they use uh, the temperature, the, 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 the voltage that uh, this equipment doesn't supposed to use. So it can ignite fire. Then number two, we're talking about hot work. What is hot work? Like when people are using drilling machines, you, uh, drilling machine, excavators or other machines. So sometimes it can lead to spark of fire. So using of a profane church also. Then number three is smoking. Smoking also can ignite fire, right? That is self-explanatory. Then um, number four, talking about cooking appliance. Cooking appliance also can ignite fire right if like you leave a a, a a fried pot on the fire right you it overheats right it can ignite fire if you forget it there then point number six talking about heating appliance so most of these heating appliance can create fire like ironing machines yeah so this also can create fire then um, number seven talk about unsafe use and storage of flammable liquid or gas or petrol right so this simply means that um that is point number seven. If you want to store some flammable items, you have to store them in a very cold place where there is no heat, so it cannot ignite fire, right? Then point number nine, talking about mechanical heat. Mechanical heat is very self-explanatory. Some of these equipment, like uh, excavator, big, big equipment we are using, machineries, they can produce heat, so it can cause fire also if uh, they, they, they overheat it. 
affected, right? Also, uh, heat over a mechanical heat can also cause by vehicle, the engine also overheating can cause fire. So we're talking about also point number 10 uh, causes of fire. We're talking about chemical reaction. Chemical reaction also when there is two, when there is some uh, elements like two chemical match up together, it can ign ignite fire. Same like some uh, chemical like bombs, they are making bombs. If they put two chemicals together, two or three chemicals together, then it can ignite fire. Then we're talking about uh, the consequences of fire. What are the consequences? That's the aftermath. That's the, the, the aftermath. We're talking about uh, financial or human loss. So whenever there's a fire, right, it can lead to big financial loss, economical loss. If it's a business or a company, they can go at loss because they have lost their property, they have lost their buildings, right? So it can lead to lost right then also disruption in business so whenever there's a fire that business also will stop for a while maybe before they can get another place to start their own business again or offices you understand so these are the consequences the facades right the 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 the, 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 the cons so we're talking also you have higher insurance premium right so sometimes if you don't have higher insurance premiums then also you can <laughs> you can lose also so these are the consequences you're facing then i'm going to talk about fire risks assessment so when we are assessing fire what are the risks that we know that uh, is going to happen so i'm going to highlight some of the risks right so um the the three main reason for assessing a managing fire risks are one to prevent to prevent harm to people this simply means that number one to prevent harm to people that so people will not lose their life will not lose any one of their parts right so to prevent this one that's why we need risk assessment then number two is to comply with the laws right so to comply with the laws right in every facility or government or they say okay you should not use some certain chemical in this place to prevent fire right you should not pass this cable electrical cable in this part to prevent fire so because of laws right so we have to do the risk assessment then we another point number three talking about minimize the cost of fire in a workplace so this is also point number three to also minimize the cost of fire so the, to minimize the cost of fire in a workplace so this is also risk assessment so i'm going also to talk about Factors to be considered in in fire risk assessment. What are the factors we need to be considered, right, in doing risk assessment? So the factors and assess, assessments sh should consider how the risk might be minimized. How the risk can be minimized. The factors, right, we need to consider. Number one, we need to identify all fire hazards, short as the sources of ignition, right? Like heat, oxygen, or loose cable. So some things that can ignite fire, we need to do random. We need to identify those things, to know those things. And also the quantities of fuel present. Also the general and specific working practice. That is no smoking policy also should be put there waste disposal where they should put waste disposal like pepper pepper uh, leaves other um, 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 trash where they can put them there are also physical condition of the premises whether the place is very hot or cold so they have to look at the condition also then point number two looking at the factors point number two says identifying people at risk including any remote worker personnel working along also disabled people with, with, with special needs who need who use or may be present at the premises so also factors you should I, we should be able to identify people that are disabled and how people will be able to use the emergency system in case of there is a fire right then point number three we have to identify 
the fire pre uh, precautions that is required. So in every facility also, the factor that we need to consider, we need to identify the, 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 identify the precaution, that is the safety measure in case of there is a fire, what we should do. So in that process, we, they have to look at the fire prevention, how to prevent the fire, then the prevention of spreading of smoke or flame, how to stop this flame, then fire detection, detection right? Like the detector alarms, if there is a fire want to start, there is a fire alarm which in, or the sensors, like the smoke detector, we're able to catch this thing. So this thing should be present. Then the means of escape, that is how in case of there is a fire, which road to use, which are the exit road, the shortest way to use, right? They, they, should, they should put sensitization on that one. Then the fire fighting equipment, that which fire equi fighting equipment they have in that facility, in that visibility, right? So they have to have like fire extinguisher, foam, 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 and other carbon, uh, other things that can prevent or can eradicate fire. Then emergency procedure also, right, should also be there, right, like a paper form the right that in case of fire, this is how people should use to er eradicate, so go out from the building to evacuate this building, right? Then also information and introduction and training. So there also should be a random training of how people in case of fire, how they should run out from the building, how they should not use the, the, the elevator, they should use their case, and how they should keep their 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 their, their office stuffs, their materials, how to, to how to separate segregation, how to separate a chemical or a flammable chemical from something which is a fuel, right? So also we're talking about uh, number three points uh, in the factor to be considered in risk assessment. We're talking about the implementing precautions and recording assessment findings and action taken. Right? Also recording inspections and maintenance. So this simply means that there should be a person in that vicinity, like a safety officer, incident manager, or the maintenance team, who should always do random investigation and random checking of every facility that these things is exposed to danger, people are exposed to danger. So everything they have to take a record. And when taking record, so the maintenance team also should follow up and do their work and 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 correct that mistake or rectify that problem right so then we're looking at uh, number seven six points to review the assessment and specific working policy and practice right so they have to review also in every workplace have to review the safety precaution right then after reviewing after a significant changes that might affect the, the fire safety after a fire emergency also then periodically they need to check check all equipment inspections in every vicinity right then i'm going also to talk about temporary working place right in temporary working place fire safety must be provided for all workers at all time if a workplace is temporarily, then the fire risk assessment should also be carried out and also a fire precaution or implementations, right, needed to be done. That the fire precautions, how uh, people in case of fire or what to do so fire will not eradicate or fire will not uh, happen in any facility. So this is particularly the case on a construction site. We are the nature of the work might means rapid changes to the layout or the nature of the working place. So fire also can ignite in some of this working place because of the nature, also because of environmental conditions also, the or, or hot work, these machines they are using, right? So they need a safety precautions in every uh, construction companies or every uh, facility, right? Because any small fires can also make a ch make changes. If an existing working place is to be changed or modified in some way, as this will affect fire safety, then the fire rigs assessment for those premises should also be reviewed and revised and as necessary. Depending upon 
national le legislation and national law, it may also be necessary to inform the regulation authority of the changes. So this simply means that in every facility or every construction place or community, there should be a, a speculate um, rules and regulation for fire evacuation or fire safety, right? So if there is any changes or layout in every in every places because they have the how to call the fire force, how to call the emergency systems, right? So they have their plans. So if anything is changed in that community or in that uh, facility, so that means they have to inform the fire force or the civil defense. It depends on which authority or emergency system that you have in your country. So then we understand that this system has changed. In case of fire, this is how we should come and save people, right? This is the assembly point. So if everything change they have to upgrade their map their system emergency system right then i'm going to talk about fire um, preventions fire prevention and prevention of spreading of fire fire prevention simply means that how we can prevent fire not to occur then uh prevention of fire of spreading of fire means how if fire uh, fire ignites how we can stop this fire from not spreading from one facility to another, from one building, from one site to another. So how we can stop this one, right? So we're talking about the best cause of action to ensure that fire safety is to prevent fire from starting. Fire prevention can be based on simple, on some simple idea taken from this fire triangle. One, I'm going to mention three. One, control of fear, right? You have to make sure that in every facility, things that will, will bring fire, like papers or trash bins or, or loose cable. So you have to separate and try to watch out for those things. Then control of ignition source. Control of ignition source, right? So how you can control these uh, oxygens, right? Uh, these uh, uh, things that can ignite fire right then also control of oxygen and source so we are there there is an oxygen the wind is blowing also you need to close those places also right so these are the three way how you can stop fire by controlling the fuel fuel or, or source then controlling the ignition of uh, source then also by controlling oxygen right so in particularly to minimize these sources Keep them physically apart. You have to separate th them differently, right? So this is how, if you have your store, you have where you can put your gas, your cooking item, uh, where you can put your papers or other items. So you have to separate them from each, each other to stay away from fire, right? For fire not to ignite, right? Then also, I'm going to talk about common, uh, the, the control of common combustible and flammable material. What are combustible material? Like this gas, uh, some chemicals, you, they are combustic. They can explode at any time, so they can ignite fire on their own, right? So, what are the control measures? Substance that, that pose a risk of fire or explosion must be stored right transportation and use appropriately storage of combustic or flammable substance should also be in a place which is how you can protect how you can uh, stop uh, combustic material from exploding or to ignite fire one number one you have to discharge what is discharge secure and single store well ventilated right built built of non-combustible material and used for none other purpose so number one says number one simply means that you have to store like if you have a gas you have to make sure that all other uh, uh, material should not be there only gas right then you have to put proper ventilation, the, the wind, you have to protect this place also. Then number two, we're talking about separate, separated and distance from others, part of the premises. So if you have one gas here, you don't have to put them together. You have to separate, separate them, right? 
so also suppression is very good then number three talking about accessible to fire fighter so this simply means that whenever you have a combustic materials like a gas in every area you should have firefighter who are present there or firefighting equipment should always be there in case of fire right then also point number number four talking about large enough to allow sp a free space around by snacking materials so there should always be free space around where you are storing these items then also number five talking about warning signs should also be displayed. So this simply means that you should always have warning sign where you're keeping combustic materials like gas. You should always play that no smoking here. Uh, do not use this place. Do not smoke here. Do not. So you should have signs that this is a combustic area. People should stay away from this area, right? Then I'm going to talk about control of ignition source. How we can control things that can produce fire right number one in protecting this one most industry most industrial fire that big big fire will be due to failure to control ignition source and also to adopt safe working practice and policy short as no smoking rules right so in controlling this ignition of fire ignite mean like something that we ignite fire like you have your your lighter it can spark then electrical cable things that can ignite fire so because sometimes the wind also in that particular combustic area there are gas which is present there so you light something like a cigarette it immediately will blast right same like our kitchens right you should not use lighter or smoking in your kitchen maybe if this gas is loose there there's gas in the atmosphere there then you light your your your, your cigarette it can immediately lead to blast right explosion so we, we we are talking about another topic we talk about system uh system of work system of work with a hot process or equipment poor maintenance machine that overheats or causes spark and also electrical equipment and system should all be subjected to safe system of working to minimize the risks of fire there should be appropriate position of equipment when it's used and safe storage for equipment when not it's used so this simply means that every equipment right you are using you should not overuse them so if they, if they overheat it can ignite fire so then also every machine should be separate from each other you don't need to keep them together then we're talking about uh, number two talking about fire guard right or lagging for equipment with hot surface right boiler or pipes right so you have to put something like a guard something like uh, everything that is hot you have to create a place where really you owe some certain things you put something that will reduce the hot right for your hand not to burn or for it not to charge any any items around which can ignite fire right then also fire watch doing fire watch doing and after and hot work so whenever they do any hot work like the, the drilling machines or other work in every area you have to check after they finish work right then also in the control measures also we're talking about good housekeeping good housekeeping also is very necessary high standard of housekeeping will ensure that the combustic materials and waste do not be present a, a, a present a fire risks working station or store stores area should be kept tightly clean to ensure that a combustic material do not come into contact with ignition or heat sources so this simply means that in every gas area where you are storing some gas right so you should not put like paper items uh things that can ignite fire can easily wood items you cannot put them in those places right you have to you have to separate them so because those are ignition of fire right then also um looking at the storage of flammable liquid and working room and also other location so the storage when we're talking about storage 
Correct storage and use of high flammable liquid will prevent accident ignition or explosion, right? So when you store them in a proper way, non-flammable substance should also be used in preference, in preference, in preference, um, whenever, wherever possible. But where flammable liquid are used. This must be correctly labeled and used in well-ventilated areas and also in a small quantity to reduce the risk of spillage, right? So this simply means that flammable liquid should be kept in a very, in a very secure place, right? This place also be, should be ventilated, right? Then also you should always prevent, you should not have more uh, liquid in that place in other way to reduce uh, um, uh, spilling. Spilling means that like a chemical can, like the oil can come to the ground, right? Fel, uh, it can spread on the ground. So when it spread on the ground, if there is a water around, it can pollute the water, right? When it goes to the soil, it can pollute the soil, right? Or also the someone inhale it, it can be effective or toxic to someone. So these are storage of flammable liquid in a workroom, right? So, um, I'm going to talk about the storage, right? We're talking about uh, another topic, structural measures for preventing the spread of fire or smoking, right? What are the measures? The layout of a building and a structural material using use can be significant to reduce the risk of fire starting or spreading. How? We have something called compartments, compart uh, compart Compartation, right? So building can be consist of compartments or cells to contain fire, right? Then compartments or cells to keep fire out. So if we're talking about property of a common building materials, we're talking about structure, we're talking about laying and division and the service to uh, decorate. So if we have a brick, right? Brick we should use a uh, timber, a uh, timber inside, right? The division. Then after timber, we use plastic pipe and cables, right? Then in a building block, you have to use building board, right? And you have to paint around. Then if you use concrete, you have to use also insulation, insulation, right? Then also stores also, you have to use glass. Then steel, steel you have to use also uh, plaster, you still you have to plaster, then timber, right? So I'm going further talking about uh, compart compartment, like compartment using steel frame, like steel frame. It's very strong, but will also conduct it and quickly lose their structure strength. And closing the structure steel is concrete with a mini minimizing the rigs. Timber is highly combustible, but can also protect the, the, the plastboard to minimize these risks. Thick timber is also likely to fail slowly. Brick, then uh, building block, boards, stones. So all these are to put for compartments, like you can block some, some combustic item to another. So these are solutions, like if you have your building, now you can separate one item from another, what partition you are going to use also. Then, uh, uh, point, uh, we are talking about preventions of opening and void. Prevention of opening and void, we're talking about the ceiling. Ceiling and floors void, as well as opening around the pipe, working and ventilation ducts can also allow the air fleet feed and spread in fire right dbs should all, should not be allowed to accumulate void and also open should also be bound fire stop with non combustible material typical characteristics of a fire door right you should also have fire door fire door um rating to withstanding fire for a minimal long period right then uh, filter with a self-closed device then filter with an intercent strip then contain a vision or a panel of resistant glass then clearly labeled fire door keep 
keep shots right because you have fire door so this fire door is protect protection right in case somebody can only use for exit not for entrance in case of their fire there is fire the electrical equipment for the use of flammable atmosphere electrical equipment sites in an explosive atmosphere could ignite the atmosphere if it is not built to the correct specification electrical equipment right according to which type of atmosphere is suitable for use working place should also be divided into zone depending on the hazardous substance that present right so basically all this one is talking about how you can if you have your gas or your businesses how you can separate one item from another in every stores you have to which items you use to do your compartment compartment mean that your walls how you can protect this one from not affecting another one right so let's say if you have a fruit here a fruit they have chemical over there so you have to prevent the chemic the fruit from the chemical because the chemical can make the fruit can be toxic or also you have leaves also can ignite fire it depends on what right then um talking about um fire alarm system and firefighter agreements appropriate fire detection and alarm system should also be used in working place right so fire alarm system also should have in working place simple simple we are where there is a low risk shout alarm then the the hand operating alarm should also be hand bell wise ear born right so also simple you have to have an alarm so to alert people fire fire right then manually operate fire alarm also should also be present in every facility they interlink smoking uh, smoke alarm so if you smoke in this certain blade there is certain alarm which can detect that there is a smoke right so individual ceilings right uh, it can be placed in ceiling so these are all self explanatory then automatical fire alarm so automatical fire alarm also whenever there is a fire around it can also automatically alarm then smoke detectors right are two type of smoke uh, detector ionized device and optical device detector then you have uh, you have heat detector you have smoke detector they have heat detectors right so these are two type of detectors right then we're talking about portable portable fire fighting equipment right i will stop here uh we're talking about okay let me proceed further we're talking about portable fire equipment when you're talking about portable fire equipment we have a uh, class a we, we have the type type of fire we have water 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 is class a yeah uh, it can be it can be combustic uh, fire they have chemical foam chemical foam can be used for class a and class b fire then powder powder can also be used in all of these class classes or electrical fire then carbon dioxide also can use in class a fire and class b fire and also electrical fire then wet powder uh, is can only use in class f fire right then uh, um, starting uh, setting portable fire fire fighter equipment should also be randomly visible and properly mounted along escape routes also at an appropriate distance from a potential fire risk normally will also be minimized of two locations on the floor then maintenance they should always try to maintenance all equipment around then training they should always try to train people's awareness training right then other firefighter equipment like fire blanket also should also be present in every facility they have fire horse drill fire horse drill also should also be present it can also use for class class a fire the automatic sprinkle that's the water they have some building they already put pipe whenever there's a fire so this one will come like a shower right to reduce the fire right this is called automatic sprinkle right so we're talking about fire uh, extinguish media extinguishing a fire base fire is based on removal of one or moving side of the triangle right so this all is self-explanation 
uh, class uh, uh, class F fire description and example and fire extinguisher. So, which are the type of fire you supposed to use? The the the, 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 the the classes of fire. You have class A. You have uh, class B, class C, and class D and F. So, which fire extinguisher you supposed to use for them? Right. Then we're talking about access for fire or rescue service, right? Like the firefighter, firefighting vehicle, right? Should have access in case of there is a fire. Then access to the building for firefighter personnel. So always there should be access for this vehicle, right? Then you have evacuation of workers, working place. So evacuation of worker place also should also be necessary. It should also be like a sign where people were able to read it at any time. Then they know what to do in case of fire, right? Then also looking at the emergency precaution procedures also. Em emergency evacuation, evacuation procedures, right? Emergency evacuation procedures should also be written into the company health and safety policies and a fire evacuation po po notice should also be displayed the evacuation plan also should be make provision for staffs staff with hearing or other physical disability so number one all employees in a workplace should also be provided with basic training everybody should be trained and get information about the fire safety in general and fire procedure in particular this should also be done at the induction or might be repeated periodically time to time so people should have the awareness they are talking about fire marshal fire marshal also should be present in every facility or building or community right to help people to help check in so check all places whether fire places safety right then we're talking about fire drill also fire drill is just like an exercise like in case of fire you have to teach people in case of fire what they should do right how they should able to evacuate the building right then the means of escaping that the plans in case of there is a fire in this building how you will do to escape this place right what are the emergency sign that will give you direction to a safer place to go to the emergency the, the the monster point the monster point is called the uh, uh, emergency point right the assemble point right so these are all for fire safety and uh, and if someone need the material you just contact me and i'll be able to send it for you thank you very much